Welcome to the Brass Hand Woodwind Shop. This is one of the most unusual instruments I've ever had in my shop. It came from about halfway around the world in New Zealand. I'm sure many of my viewers are also subscribed to Trent Hamilton. We are doing a collab. I am fixing his instrument and in the middle of me fixing it we're going to do a couple interviews with each other and after it's all finished Trent is going to play this instrument on his channel. If you do not know who Trent Hamilton is, look in the description below for a link to his channel. He comes up with some of the most interesting and unusual instruments, and I love unusual instruments, so I'm looking forward to opening up this. And if you're wondering what this is, it is an enharmonic euphonium, and I had never heard of one of these before Trent Hamilton mentioned it to me. So I'm looking forward to opening this up and seeing what's in there. We'll start out with this little box. He forgot to put something in the package, so he actually ended up sending two packages here. So let's see what we have in here. So there's the lead pipe. There are lots of dents in it, so that's a lot of work for me to do. That's a very interesting brace right there. I've never seen one quite like that. And now the rest of it. This is exciting. I have never heard of one of these instruments before. Trent mentioned it to me. Okay, there are the valves. So let's see what's in here. Uh, looks like, uh, wow, this is in really bad condition. Oh well. And some of you might recognize these valves, or at least the setup. Wow, oh, this is in very, very bad condition. But I think I can fix it. Oh, wow. This is going to be a lot of work. Looks like there's a crack right there where the valve comes together. It looks like someone had tried to solder this before, but it did not work too well. It looks like there's a big gap between the port, the tubes that go into the ports and the face of the valve. So that is going to take a lot of work. I'm going to have to solder all those shut. Then after that, I'm definitely going to need to plate the valves. These look like they're in really bad condition. Let's see what else we have. Yeah, these valves look like Swiss cheese with all the holes in them. Oh yeah, these are in very bad condition. It's definitely going to need a lot of valve work, but I think I can handle it. Wow, that is an interesting valve right there. I don't think I've ever seen one quite like that. Okay, one more valve in here. Okay, a couple braces. Okay, that's all that's in there. I'm going to keep going and see what else is in here. There is the bell. Huh, that's a smaller bell than I thought it was going to be. Okay, that's a cute little bell for a euphonium. Okay, there is the valve section. Wow, that is quite a mess of tubing right there. This is some very interesting engraving on the bell. It says Class A Enharmonic Patented Besson and Company, and then I think it says what, Diode. Uh, Dialotype, I think that's what it says, and then the address in London, England, and then it says Agents uh, Charles Bag and Company Limited, New Zealand. So I'm not sure if they probably just sent it to New Zealand and then they stamped that on the bell, but this is quite old, so that would have been a long time ago that they did that. I'm not sure exactly what all of this means. Trent can probably tell us more about that. And then about this system of valves uh, and the tubing. There is tubing all over the place on this thing. A lot of you are probably familiar with the best in compensating instruments. What happens on those, I actually did a video on this before, so you can look at that video. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, but I'll just tell you about it real quick. On compensating instruments, when you do not push down the fourth valve, it just runs it through one set of tubing, and then that's the note you play. If you push down the fourth valve, what happens is it runs it through a second time. So you get whatever valve you push down, that amount of tubing, plus then there's some um, tubing on the back, then it adds on a little bit so that it keeps the fourth valve in tune and so that it gets the proportion of tubing correct. On this one, it's a little bit different. It's a lot like a double horn, 
if you're if you do not have the fourth valve pushed down it goes through the one set of tubing and then you push the fourth valve down it adds some more tubing to it and then it goes through the other set of tubing there's a double horn right now it is in the key of f if you push down the lever it turns it into the key of b flat so what happens is when it's in the key of f there's some extra tubing that's on there and then to compensate for the extra amount of tubing you need a different amount of length of slides so that's why you see on the top the slides are longer that's for the key of f on the bottom they're shorter and that's for the key of b flat the fourth valve switches it back and forth between those keys and it also switches it back and forth between which set of tubes the air is going through this setup is very common on double horns, but I've never seen this before on a euphonium. Let's see how this works. Let's see, where does the air come through? Okay, it comes in through here. Uh, the lead pipe came off, but it's right there. There's the tooting slide. It goes into here. And then, let's see. Hmm. Uh, where does... Huh. This is a weird, really weird setup. Um... So I guess it comes out through here and into the fourth valve. And then, let's see, the fourth valve puts it through either, hmm, let's see, it has this extra set. Oh, so it's only like a, like a one whole step difference. Okay, I'm not sure what key this is in. It's probably in the key of B flat or C. Uh, I'll have to ask Trent if he knows, but I think it just adds on that little bit of tubing. So if the fourth valve is up, I'm guessing it goes through this to put it in the key of B flat. That's just a guess, but that's what I'm thinking. And so then it runs it through this tube right here, which goes, hmm, where is it? It goes, okay, to the back right there, and it runs it through... Oh, this thing is very confusing. Hmm. Hmm. This thing is pretty hard to figure out. I'm going to turn off the camera, and then I'll get back to you when I get it figured out. It is several minutes later, and I've tried to figure this out. I looked at the valves and tried to figure out which way the valves go in there, but there are no numbers on the valves, or at least the numbers have worn off over the years. So I'm going to have to figure out which valve goes in where, and then mark those valves so... Uh, it was a little too complicated to figure out if I don't have the valves marked. So anyway, it's going to take me a while just to figure out which valve goes in which spot. The way you do that is you look where the valve guide is. You see how it lines up to the slot that is in the valve or in the casing. And then you see how the ports line up to the other ports. So I can figure that out, but it's just going to take a very long time. And when I do get it figured out, I'm going to mark the number on the valve so that it's going to be easier for the next person who does that. But all that to say, I did not figure out how the tubing works on this thing. So I'm not sure how all of this works and goes together with the tubing, but I am going to figure that out, but it just will not be today though. This instrument is missing the second valve slide, and I can be guaranteed I cannot find one of those, so I'm going to have to make something that works. And also it is missing the upper valve caps and finger buttons, and it looks like a valve stem. So all those I'm going to have to make or find something that works. I'm looking forward to starting this project, but I have a couple other projects I need to finish first. So I'm planning on putting the first video on next week. This, I think, is going to be the most challenging project I have ever attempted. Thank you for watching, and be sure to look in the description below for a link to Trent Hamilton's YouTube channel.